Britain, particularly enough people from uh, ethnic minority backgrounds, were appalled by the way in which um, Shopachetti was being treated. Um, and therefore their complaints and their attitudes must be taken into account and they were right. And in that case, there's no doubt from their point of view they perceived it as racist. Do they do that in India, eat with the hands? Or is that in China? Oh, well, you shut up! You shut up! Shut up! You shut the f up! She can't even speak English properly anyway. I think she should f*** our phone. Tonight, Channel 4 has insisted there's been no overt racial abuse. Racism. 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 Culture and class clash. Racism. Cultural difference. Of course it's not racist. It's off in my eyes. Racist behaviour against Ekra Shilpa Shetty. No overt racial abuse. Shilpa Shetty. Chappelle, Chappelle. The debate is raging about what's driving them. A clash of class or racism. It's obviously racist. Racism and racist bullying. There's no doubt about that. There's no point being silly about that and saying, pretending that it wasn't. It's quite obviously was. Jade Goody was certainly guilty of hectoring and a bit of bullying and slightly ugly behaviour, and she herself is quite happy to admit that. Uh, but it wasn't really uh, racism that drove it, in my opinion. But we are speculating about people's motives here. The thing about racism is you can't prove it. It's just one of those things. You know it when you see it. You know, for, for, for my money, it was pretty obvious what was going on. It was right for it to be screamed. It is reality. It did come from anger and loss of temper, but it was good that people saw it because they were offended by it. And perhaps they'll toil a little harder to prevent it happening in their own lives. But as the controversy rages, Channel 4 bosses incredibly still won't publicly comment. The chairman of Channel 4, Luke Johnson, ironically son of the Paul Johnson, who'd called Michael Grade a pornographer, was forced into the open. Sort of. Are you going to intervene to stop this? Uh, if you refer to the statement, you'll see what our view is. Do you think racist bullying is good entertainment? Uh, as I say, if you refer to our statement, you'll see what our comment is. Well, we did ask someone from Channel 4 to come on to the programme to discuss the row over Big Brother, but they declined. Well, we did want to interview someone from Channel 4, but they declined to come on. We did ask Channel 4 to come onto the programme this evening, but they declined to appear. As the row went on, Channel 4's boss eventually showed up, insisting that the remarks on screen were not overtly racist. We have been monitoring extremely carefully events in the House and have reached the view that we cannot with certainty say that the comments directed at Shilpa had been racially motivated. I was struck by um, our slowness to argue back about a show that was being quite you know, routinely uh, traduced in the media. Channel 4 had a, a media strategy to basically go to the bunker, do nothing, keep your head down, say nothing. Um, and it was quite strange. I just don't think the Channel 4 leadership thought it through. I, I think that, uh, that, that they had something incredibly important on their hands and didn't recognise it. They just thought, oh, God, all this criticism, what do we do about it? What, what blew up was almost unprecedented, I think. It wasn't the first controversy Channel 4 has had in its history, and I think, you know, if you look back over previous chief executives, they've all had their difficult periods when it's come to programming issues, um, and in some cases, you know, have handled them better than others. I think with hindsight, we should have probably fielded other people earlier, um, perhaps the commissioning editor or the director of programmes at that time. Channel 4's handling of the episode led to unprecedented criticism by its regulator, Ofcom. Ofcom ruled against us and they said not that we shouldn't have transmitted the material we did, but that we should have made it absolutely clear in terms of the context that uh, Channel 4 and Big Brother was not condoning the uh, offensive behaviour of the housemates. The Big Brother row came in a year when the whole of television found itself under severe scrutiny for various crimes and misdemeanours. But as Channel 4 gets ready to celebrate its 25th birthday, the row has forced it to ask questions about its future. A quarter of a century on, what does Channel 4 stand for and where's it heading? The Channel 4 remit is something that can endure forever. You know, be different, be innovative, listen to new voices, doesn't go away. The response to it will change completely depending on the political and cultural circumstances of the time. For us, it was very easy because there was so much untrodden territory. 
Now it's much more difficult. Channel 4 stood for the idea that instead of there being one audience for television, there were many audiences. Even if what pleased one viewer offended another viewer. We wanted to get away from the idea that you could broadcast good programming that offended nobody. You never could and you never will. At its heart, taking risks, of course, remains the most important thing. If, if, we, if we ever get to a point where we, we, we're afraid to take risks or we stop taking risks, frankly, we should be sold off. Yes, but there's risk-taking and risk-taking. For those outside the glass bubble, is Channel 4 still delivering the bold, brave and innovative programmes on which its reputation was built? I just don't quite know where Channel 4 developed into the, the channel that is, you know, the, the channel of Wife Swap and, and, and Big Brother. Um, because I think it, ch it should exist, and it has existed, to do original and different and um, challenging and thought-provoking programmes. And uh, that's, what, that's, that's what the channel was originally set up for. Uh, and I think that there is a place for that. Channel 4 is great because it is completely different to any of the others. But I think if it becomes too populist and they're making shows that everybody else is making, then they're, to me, not doing what was always great about Channel 4. And all I would say to Channel 4 is, um, you know, different outlook, great. Um, but also, don't make things too complicated. Don't get up your own ass with your own ego about what you're supposed to be. None of this is going on, is it? You know, let's be honest, it's a cutting room floor. Uh, and you can keep things simple. Hello and welcome to After Dark. As tonight's In its history, all sorts of things have ended up on our screens that might have been left on other broadcasters' cutting room floors. And the subject of tonight's discussion. Taking risks and being prepared to fail is what Channel 4 was set up for and what remains at its heart. Want the death penalty. Britain would be a lot less colourful without it. Um, I might say, I don't, I don't believe in the death penalty, but Please. I can see that there is a strong public argument on, on, on that. There is, and there's a passionate Excuse public me. feeling about no, the death do penalty. I have to, am I expected no, to? No, no, of course you're not expected to be done that. Oliver, please. Right. Sorry. You've been a born, you know you have. Sorry. <laughs> right. Carry on my wayward son There'll be peace when you are done Um... Father Ted. Father Ted. Everyone that grew up with Channel 4 loves Channel 4. Shameless, brilliant acquisitions from around the world. Desperate Housewives. West Wing. Friends. My name's Earl. Sopranos, which I absolutely love. Um, uh, now I need to try and remember what was Channel 4. Rory Bremner. Channel 4 News. Channel 4 News. Channel 4 News. Channel 4 News has always been the best news programme on television. I think it's the beating heart of Channel 4. It may be that it's a worldwide phenomenon, that it's third time lucky. So we're going to go back to Tehran. His first live interview with British television since the crisis began. Channel 4's chief executive, Andy Duncan, is with me now. It's produced some incredible drama. I wish I could remember the dramas. There's been... I know there's been loads. Longford. Loved very British crew. If it is simple-minded and foolish to feel revulsion at the fact that millions of men, women and children are forced to live in hell so that a tiny bunch of fat cats can eat the free... Who are you? Who are you? Don't you cry no more. This is going to have to intercut this, coming back to, like, Man with Alzheimer's, where... Um, and I love the, the way they experiment with comedy. Between you and me, don't tell anyone else, but I am moist at the thought of telling <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine wanting to tell anyone else. Can you play <laughs> Boy, that's a nice wet start to the show. Yeah. <laughs> Hope we don't stick to the scene. <laughs> Jonathan Ross started on Channel 4. I mean, all the young comedians who break through probably start on Channel 4. Tons of stuff, Countdown, although I, I have to say, I don't really watch Countdown, but, you know, grannies love it, don't they? We're great watchers of Countdown. And now, of course, 25 years later, it's so old-fashioned and cosy that it's almost, it's sort of retro and trendy again. Meet our vital statistician, Carol Vorderman. She's a Cambridge yeah. graduate and she works in computers. I'm just delighted to have been on it for so long. Hope I can carry on for a bit longer. Well, at least till Friday. <laughs> I 
And you can see that 21-year-old Carol Vorderman on the very first count on, followed by the Grants getting into early trouble in Brookside. Then Ian McKellen stars in the first film on 4, Walter, and finishing...